John, a uh, few. In, uh, I don't know if you remember. Uh, we, we were in Washington, right? And this lady, uh, and she, uh, she, who actually, she said she was carrying a designation of enterprise architect for the last ten years. Do you remember that incident? Do you like to yeah. share with our audience today? Yeah, I. Uh, this lady was a very bright lady, and she was working in an agency in the U.S. federal government. I ha happen to know a little bit about, and uh, she had spent four days with us at the in a Zachman a certification workshop and at the end of the fourth day you know she she was having a kind of a light bulb experience and she was saying oh my gosh I I've been an enterprise architect for 10 years and I didn't even know what enterprise architecture was so it was kind of a relevant re revelation for her uh, to uh, see, you know, when, of course, I make the make the argument. My framework is enterprise architecture, and if you're not doing the prim producing these primitive models, you're not doing architecture. It's easy for me to say that, but it takes some experience, and we do uh, some exercise where people can have some hands-on experience with producing the primitive models and from then creating composite implementations and after uh, after four days the the lady was saying oh my gosh I, I get it here and I haven't even been doing enterprise architecture so it was a it was a kind of a light bulb uh, kind of experience for her and she was a very bright lady and I, we appreciated her her a lot and and we had another uh, the funny experience where one of this <laughs> CIO uh, uh, you know who attended your program a couple of maybe a decade uh, earlier and he had sent one of his folks to your program uh, do you remember that the guy said uh, everything I my boss taught me was wrong oh jeez <laughs> yeah right <laughs> well yeah basically the thing about it is you know the framework, if you just glance at it, it makes sense. It's, it, it's ordered, you know, it's attractive gra graphic, it's an attractive picture. You can glance at it and they say, oh, yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So, But when you begin to understand what the implications of it are and to employ it from a practice standpoint, say, whoa, this is different than I heard or I thought. So that's just one illustration of that where the CIO had heard me talk for an hour or, or half a day or something and and uh, sent this the person to the workshop and uh, and, that, and, that, and then the, you normally the people who go to the workshop they have a light bulb experience around to the third or fourth day they say oh my gosh I begin to see the implication of this holy smokes so what you're saying is that when you download your framework people are not able to visualize the applications of that <laughs> they're only yeah, seeing so. it's like uh, you know, um, just to kind of get a point to all the, you know, uh, our audience right now for this who are watching, you know, it's pretty much like imagine uh, looking at the formulas given by Newton and then trying to visualize an aircraft. It's impossible. Uh, yeah, right. I'm like, by looking at his theories, you cannot visualize an aircraft. But as you start to apply, you will eventually reach there. I think something similar to what is happening to the people who download your framework and the theory of framework and then actually understanding the applications, the implications of that theory in, act, in, in, ent in the world of the enterprise uh, engineering. Uh, that's absolutely right. Uh, you know, one thing is uh, if you want to know how to engineer things, you're going to go to a university. You're not going to go to a trade school. You're going to go to university and you're going to study. You're going to learn the fundamentals, including the Newton's law, first, second, third law of motion. You're going to learn the second law of thermodynamics. You have to learn what the ontological constructs are, the basic theoretical constructs. It was uh, uh, Kurt Lewin that said, there's nothing so practical as a good theory. And right. until you understand the theory, you're not going to be able to understand the practice. You're going to be relegated to what you can learn by in a, in a lifetime, just trial by trial and error. So you've got to go uh, learn what the theoretical constructs are, and then you can begin to become an engineer. 
Uh, so if you don't understand the theoretical contracts, you're not going to do engineering. You're just going to be a, you know, you'll build log cabins. You're not going to engineer 100-story buildings. Right. You're not going to be able to deal with complexity and change and so on. So, so what do you I mean, the, yeah. so, you know, the experience in science is very consistent with what we're talking about. I believe that's where it's going. This will be enterprise uh, engineering and design is going to become a science. It's not just winging it. A practice. It's going to be a scum of science. And if you don't, if you don't uh, nurture that, if you don't do something with it, you're not going to be one of the players. It's just, you know, it's the same thing that we see repeated in history in every other known discipline: mathematics, uh, uh, physics, chemistry, sociology, anthropology, medicine. I don't care what it is. You, 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 you've got laws of nature. You've got to understand. And then you become a, a a professional. Up until that time, you're just winning it.